because we're following some breaking news from Minnetonka right now, where Fox 9 has confirmed two Hennepin County Sheriff's deputies have been shot. Officials saying their injuries are not considered life threatening. That's the good news. This all happened just after 11 a.m. this morning, right around 11 18. Those deputies were serving a search warrant at a home near Excelsior Boulevard. Let's listen in now. Hennepin County Sheriff Dewana Witt talking about what happened this morning and where they are in the investigation. Good afternoon. I want to thank all of our partners being here today, Edina Police Department, Minnetonka Police Department, the ATF, Commissioner Jeff Lundy, and our Hennepin Health um, EMS. This morning at 11.20 a.m., I received a call that every law enforcement leader fears of getting. Officer down. Today at approximately 11.18 a.m., Hennepin County Sheriff's deputies were attempting an arrest warrant in the city of Minnetonka. While serving the warrant, one deputy was injured by gunfire involving an armed individual. That deputy was transported to the hospital for treatment for non-life-threatening injuries, yet very serious injuries. A second deputy was treated for injuries on scene as a result of the gunfire and was released on scene. The armed individual died on scene. I just returned from the hospital where I visited our deputy, his family, other deputies, as well as law enforcement from various agencies. In my talking with the family and our injured deputy, I cannot begin to tell you the emotions that are going on right now. Multiple law enforcement agencies were present at the scene to assist. The Minnetonka Police Department Chief is here today and will present additional information on the incident status. The BCA, who is also here with us today, is actively investigating this case and Superintendent Drew Evans will speak later as well. Assaults against law enforcement are becoming increasingly common in Minnesota. They have doubled since 2017. This has got to stop. Every single day, first responders are rushing to help others, helping to keep our community safe. They do not deserve to be threatened. They do not deserve to be assaulted. They do not deserve to be killed for doing their job of trying to keep the community safe. We know that there is a risk that we may not make at home to our families. And I don't say that very lightly because I will tell you, I tell my family, I promise my family, I will come home to them every day. It's not a promise that should be broken by any of our first responders. Yet the heroes in law enforcement, they still answer the call, they still show up. A thankless job a lot of times. We are so glad that both of our deputies injured today will live. But then we never talk about the unseen wounds that these type of incidents, these unnecessary incidents have on us. <sighs> Thank you. And next you'll hear from Minnetonka Chief Burbon. Thank you, Sheriff. As the sheriff mentioned, my name is Scott Borbum. I'm the police chief in the city of Minnetonka. And at about 11.20 a.m., our officers received a request to respond to an address in our city to assist the sheriff's office who was uh, trying to serve an arrest warrant. And there was at some point an exchange of gunfire. So there was an officer help call put out and agencies from all over the West Metro converged on our city. Our officers arrived and were able to uh, remove the injured officer from the scene and the officer was transported to an area hospital. Unfortunately, the scene is still active in this moment. It is contained. There's no threat to the safety of the, of the area around. Um, however, it's still very active, and I don't have any more details to share about the scene. At this point, I'd like to introduce uh, Superintendent uh, Drew Evans with the BCA. Thanks, Chief. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Drew Evans. I'm the superintendent at the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. And I unfortunately am here before you again today talking about police officers in the state of Minnesota that have been shot, which has been far too many over the past 15 months in our state. Luckily, we're talking about police officers that are going to recover and didn't die um, doing their job. But as part of that, the sheriff's office, because as was noted, they returned fire uh, as this individual fired at them. And so they requested our BCA Force Investigations Unit to conduct an investigation in the totality as to the investigation as to what occurred, what led up to the events, what led to the deputies being shot in this instance, and then what led to the deceased uh, individual, the, 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 the facts uh, surrounding that. In this particular case, what we'll be doing is our force investigations team will be out on scene once the scene is actually secured. As Chief noted, that it is still active and they're still in the process of clearing that scene and making it safe. They're being abundantly cautious in that process so that we ensure that nobody else is injured uh, in this particular incident going forward. Once that scene is safe, our BCA agents and crime scene personnel will be on scene gathering evidence, the forensic evidence that's at the scene. We will be talking to witnesses in the area. We will be gathering video, both from the uh, deputies' body worn camera and surrounding areas, along with any video that might be in the neighborhood. We certainly would like to hear from anybody that witnessed the incident um, that occurred today or heard anything about it or the events leading up to this. We're in the very preliminary stages of this investigation. As was noted, this was as a part of executing a warrant on an individual who was wanted. We are still in the process of determining the identity of the deceased person. An autopsy will be conducted once we're able to get into the scene and by the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, once that occurs, there will be an identification of that individual. We know you have a lot of questions about what occurred. And I just need to say at the outset, we'll be happy to answer some questions, but there's so much that we're still in the process of gathering and we'll be working on, and in the coming days, we will provide additional information to you once we're able to confirm exactly what occurred. And with that, I'd be happy to take a few questions for us, the chief or the sheriff. Uh, you said, uh, or, or I, th I think the sheriff said that the armed individual is, is deceased. Can you tell us, I mean, what, was he shot? How did he die? And also, was he wearing body armor? Well, the, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner will be the one to make the determination as to the cause and manner of death. We believe uh, at this time that it was from uh, gunfire, but we have not determined the exact sequence as to whether or not uh, how that happened. So we will be in the process of doing that. As noted, it's really difficult for us to say because the scene is still active. And so until our investigators and agents can get in, I would be remiss to not say that we still need to determine that. So we're not, we haven't seen him in the scene yet. We're not in the scene. So once we're in the scene, we don't, we believe he was shot. As, as, as during this, we don't know who shot him. Were there more than one person in the home at this time? When you, second part, when you say active situation inside the home right now is still active, does that mean there's other potential danger in the house? So start with, were there more than one person and that's the danger? As Chief Burun said, that they, they believe it's contained at this time. We don't believe in terms of that um, they're in the process of clearing right now. We don't believe other individuals are involved, but they are still in the process of clearing that right now. How many shots were fired at deputies first? We don't have that information yet. That'll be part of the investigation. How many deputies originally went out to execute that warrant? Well, I don't know that I have. Yeah, we're still in the process of determining that. You know, certainly there were several police officers throughout the course of this incident, um, and we'll be ascertaining the exact number as that. But it was part of an, you know, routine uh, work that they do every day, uh, as the sheriff noted, going out trying to apprehend those individuals that are wanted in Hennepin County, which is one of the duties of the sheriff's office. Okay, The two deputies that were injured, uh, one's an eight-year veteran, the other is a 21-year 20, veteran. Um, I could tell you they were both loved. They are both loved. They both have families. Um, but they are good deputies that were doing their job. Is that Not at this time. He was not hit. He was not shot. Can you say what, what did happen? 
right now, until there's more investigation, I would rather give you all the facts rather than giving you a quick answer. And so I want to make sure that we're factual. What is important is he was injured in the course of his duties. How is not the most important thing? He was injured. And that's what I want to put emphasis on. Well, you know, there'll be a lot more facts that are coming out right now. You know, the preliminary information we have is they were looking for a wanted individual related to a felony warrant at the home. We'll provide additional details on that as we confirm that as part of the investigation. Do you believe that the person that has died at the home is connected to that warrant, or is that still being determined? It's still to be determined. It's a good question. We are in the process of trying to determine the identity of the individual that's deceased. We certainly know the identity of the individual they were looking for, and we need to determine whether or not those are the same person. Is anyone in custody? Nobody is in custody at, at this time, no. Sure. Was, was this a team? Was it a task force? This is a part of our patrol unit. That's a part of our emergency services unit, to be specific, and um, that is a part of their job. They do execute warrants. As, as a team, not necessarily a task force. Does that change how they approach the home? You know, can you walk through a little bit how a deputy, a deputy would prepare to approach serving these warrants? I can tell you that no incident is the same. I can tell you that they do their homework before they're executing these dangerous um, um, course of their jobs. So to know what the specifics and what was done for this specific incident, I don't have that information for you now, but I will say that they're well trained and they, whenever given the opportunity, there's planning that goes into each incident to ensure that it's done in the most safe and professional manner. Chair, how hard is it on law enforcement and maybe when this keeps happening? You said, you know, 15 months you saw burns and a lot of people immediately thought of that. Um, does it start to really take its toll and it's hard to do your job when you know that's there or is that always something? Yeah, it's hard. It is hard to do this job, but somebody has to do it. And we should want to make sure that the people that keep answering this call are well equipped, well supported, knowledgeable in the things that they do. We've been talking about for quite some time now the shortages that all law enforcement agencies are experiencing. And it's these type of incidents that's only one of the factors as to what's making it so hard for us to recruit right now and to retain. Again, we all make promises to go home to our family. And then when you see something like this, how does it not just affect us that are wearing these uniforms, but our loved ones? So yes, to answer your question, it makes it quite difficult every time we're dealing with this. He he's the one with the eight years experience. And are they both male officers? Yes. And then deputies. Both They're both deputies. male deputies, yes. And then um, are the roles opened up around the hospital now? Well, because I'm here I would not know that, so I'm not sure. Yeah. In the coming days, we're going to provide you a lot more information once we confirm it. You know, we're only a couple hours into this investigation. I know you want that information. We will get it to you. We just need to confirm all that information. And our agents and our crime scene team will be working diligently through the night to get that information, and we'll release additional information in the coming days. What is the best way to describe, most Uh, again, this is part of the active investigation. What we do know is that this individual fired at the deputies and that they returned fire, and that's part of the investigation, and we will work through the exact sequencing of that and what that looks like and provide information in the coming days. Just to confirm on that, you said suspect shot at the deputy, they returned fire. Again, we are working through the specific sequencing right now. We certainly know that the individual fired at the deputies. We have a deputy that was shot, and we know that they returned fire. We will work through the specific sequencing as to what that looks like, and we will provide you that information as soon as we can confirm it. That's part of the active investigation. We'll provide that information as we uncover it as well.
It was emotional. It was refreshing to see that. Um, you know, people continuously ask, what do you need? And my response is, sometimes you don't know what you need. So if you see something that needs to be done, just do it. Talk to people. Hug people. Oh, you know, everybody responds differently to these type of things, and some people respond soon, sooner, some respond later. So just that showmanship of showing up and knowing that you have that support system in place is um, it's invaluable. Um, we were very um, happy to see that our uh, brothers and sisters from various agencies were uh, showing up to the hospital as well as calling, texting, and the question is, is what do you need? And when you're going through, actively going through it, sometimes, again, you just don't know what you need. But I can tell you, embracing that um, support that we're seeing is, is very helpful to us, as well as our deputies. Hennepin County Sheriff Dewana Witt there talking about uh, the Incident that occurred in Minnetonka in the city of Minnetonka about 11 o'clock this active, morning. Yeah, a couple real key points here. One, uh, it is a contained situation now there in Minnetonka. The individual on the scene that was in that house, we believe in the house, uh, is deceased. Uh, not sure exactly how they died. Uh, they did indicate that uh, there was an exchange of gunfire. Two deputies were injured in that. One an eight-year vet uh, injured, not life-threatening, however, did uh, go to the hospital and is being seen right now. The second uh, deputy there treated on the scene uh, from injuries not necessarily related to gunfire. A couple things that should be noted here. The Minnetonka police chief again says, if you're in that area, note that it is contained, but it is still an active investigation. There is the scene right there uh, on that map and now from the sky. Uh, the superintendent of the BCA, Drew Evans, also part of this investigation. His officers will step into this as soon as the scene is cleared. But a few points from him. He said the officers returned fire as they were fired upon. Uh, his officers and other deputies are on the scene assessing it right now. They want to hear from anybody who may have seen anything while this was happening. Uh, they need as much information as they can. They're also in the process of identifying the person who was killed there. Is it the person who the warrant was being served upon, or is it somebody else? He said, until we get into the house, we don't know the answer to that yet. Um, this is a situation where these officers were fired upon and they fired back. And one more thing I wanna, because this was a big, kind of a big part of this, of this press conference. Sheriff Witt, very emotional with this. You, you know, some of the things that she said, assault on law enforcement has got to stop. She was very emotional about that. They do not, and she's referring to first responders, deserve to be injured or killed just doing their jobs. This is uh, happening too frequently. It's making it very difficult to be law enforcement officers. It's ma making it very difficult for them to recruit law enforcement officers. In this particular case, life was spared among those first responders, but it's still very, very tragic and dramatic when this happens to law enforcement. We're gonna continue to follow this throughout the evening. We'll have much more coming up at five o'clock in our subsequent newscasts as well. In the meantime, we'll send you back to regular programming. I'm Randy Meyer, I'll see you at five.